one. Drink. The last one. The white one, yeah. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us. I'm Alyssa Newcomb from NBC News, and we are joined by Jamel Agawa, the CEO of Viber, and Ismail Ahmed, the CEO of World Remit. And we are talking about the impact of technology on migrants. We're living in a time where we have more people uh, moving far away from home than ever. And I wanted to start out by asking Ismail, how has the experience of being a migrant changed over the past few decades? I know you moved away from Somaliland during a time when Viber didn't even exist. Uh, change really inc uh, incredibly. Um, back in uh, late eight, 1988, when I left Somaliland, I won a scholarship to study at the University of London. And so when I got a uh, visa, booked a flight, the war in Somalia broke out. And I got stuck, and after I had this journey, uh, reached uh, the neighboring country. And one of the most difficult uh, thing at that stage was finding out about this situation of uh, family. We didn't have fiber or WhatsApp at the time, so getting that information. So for about several weeks when I traveled from Somaliland to Djibouti, I didn't know the situation of my family. My Hargeisa, our capital, was destroyed by the war. And so in fact, my family thought that I was killed in the war because for six weeks they didn't know what I, what I was up to. And then when I reached London, uh, I sent most of my scholarship money after I paid the fees because sending money back was very difficult. Communication was difficult. I actually sent more money than I would have done if I had communications like today. So certainly technology has helped migrants to connect back home, uh, to, 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 to be more up to date on what is happening back, you know, back home. Great, and I just wanted to say, hey, we have Mike Butcher also joining us. Joining Sorry. us. Sorry about that, everyone. Got stuck in traffic. <laughs> I think it was a very fashionable entrance. Oh. Um, so Mike founded TechFugees, yeah. which engages the tech community to help find solutions to the migration. Yeah. Well, um, I mean, I think one of the things is we all got to get used to the fact that migration is a 21st century story, right? Now. Just recently, some new figures came out that said that because of climate change, about 20 million people from Africa will be heading north to Europe. 20 million people in the next 10, 15, 10 or 15 years. Now, I want to ask you guys to think about this. We always talk about digital societies and you know entrepreneurship. And I would like you to ask yourselves this. What's the difference? between a digital nomad and a refugee with a smartphone, right? There's no difference. Why are we putting presets on human beings who are moving around the planet, trying to get a better life for themselves, trying to get a life, better life for their families, and we call them refugees? You know what? They're human beings, people with skills, and people that we should work to integrate. So my idea called TechFugees was to get the technology industry to start thinking about solutions to this problem, which is scalable, because the solutions have to be scalable in order to meet the problems. That's what tech people are good at. People are good at creating scalable solutions which go from zero to a million overnight, right? We've got to think about those issues ourselves instead of thinking, oh, you know, well, you know, I'm a digital nomad, man. I'm cool. I'm getting around the planet. You know what? You need to give those skills to other people. You need to give respect to other people for exactly the same things that you ask for yourself. And well said. And, you know, a lot of companies are also starting to kind of bake this into their corporate social responsibility. Yeah. Jamel, I'm wondering if, you could, wondering if you can talk to me a bit about 
what Viber has in the works. Yeah, at Viber, it's, um, I mean, um, migrants are at the core of our DNA. Um, the, the, our signature has never changed. We, we connect people fully and securely wherever they are, whoever they are, wherever they are coming from. And that's what we are doing on a daily basis. And uh, each time we have uh, the opportunity to, uh, to support some people that are in movement or in migration, uh, we try to do it. And it can be for, I would say, regular immigration. People that just decide to move from a country to another by giving them the opportunity to call or message their family for free, basically. And it happens all the time. But it also be, uh, could be in some specific situations. And I want to, uh, to name, uh, to, uh, to highlight two specific situations. When, when the new president has been elected in, uh, in the US, you remember that uh, he decided a kind of uh, travel ban for mm -hmm. seven countries. And then immediately, uh, thousands of people were stuck. I mean, tens of thousands of people were stuck in uh, the US airports. And we decided immediately to, um, to offer free communication to uh, those people to call their country and from those countries to those people. Uh, and we did it immediately, uh, and we, 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 uh, we kept this operation alive for as long as the travel ban was uh, in operation. And recently, we have decided another, op another operation with uh, a group of media, which uh, sounds like a little bit what your initiative, uh, Mike. Um, it's uh, France 24, and uh, it's a French uh, news media, plus uh, Italian media and German media that uh, partners together to build um, a portal for migrants called Info Migrants, mm -hmm. uh, where migrants can find double check information about where they are going, if they can go that route or that route, uh, administrative stuff and things like that. And we have decided to support this initiative by, uh, by uh, uh, pr proposing them for free public accounts and chatbots to allow the users from those countries, a lot of countries in the Middle East and North Africa, to, uh, to use this, this information and to consume this information for free. Now, do you find that getting reliable information in one place is a challenge right now that people are facing? Well, I think we, we talked about a lot about fake news these days, and, 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 uh, and especially in the in this kind of situation, you don't have access to your normal media. You also have a problem of linguistic skills. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why this portal is, uh, is in three languages, in uh, Arabic, English, and French. Um, you move from a country to another, you, you don't know those countries, and it's, and it's not... I'm French, I moved to the US. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to be an easy move. Mm -hmm. It's not, because there are differences. Can you imagine a guy from Syria moving to France or a guy from uh, Swaziland moving to the UK? I mean, it's a, it's a big, huge change. You don't know anything about the code, so you need information, and to get this information is not easy, because you don't know what's right, what's wrong, mm -hmm. and you have a lot of people that try to take advantage of this ignorance of these uh, refugees or immigrants to make money out of it. So I um, think it's, those um, are very I good. Think, I think it's fascinating that you look at like, communications platforms like Viber and uh, WhatsApp and Facebook Messenger and things like that. You know, as technologists, we can actually build solutions to help people to integrate more, to give them education. You know, people talk about chatbots so that, you know, you message your bank and go, you know, how much money have I got left in the balance and things like that. Um, but those solutions can be used to help people to integrate into societies as well. And if we can think about those things, then will people will integrate faster. They'll get their kids, kids in school. They'll get jobs. And these are, you know, it's super important actually to think about those things when you're building, you know, chatbots or, you know, even you know, simple things like that. When you think about that. But I think what also uh, communication enables uh, the migrants is to uh, stay in, in contact with the family and uh, yeah, totally. stay up to date with their with their countries and. And probably we don't hear, it doesn't hit the news, but uh, many of the migrants go back. I mean, I talked earlier about the war, in the, particularly in Somalia, and, and how Somaliland became independent. Probably more than half of the people from original Somaliland who came to Europe in the early 1990s have gone back. We have an elections in Somaliland, presidential elections, uh, next week. Two, two of the candidates are... Uh, people who were originally in Europe, in Finland, who are now uh, back in the country. So, so obviously, if they, if migrants stay, uh, you know, up to date, follow developments back home, and technology has a lot to offer, I think they are more likely to go back with skills and help, uh, uh, you know, contribute to the. To, 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 yeah, uh, we we, back o home. we yeah. often we often talk about uh, refugees as coming to a country and you know and then you know uh, settling somewhere, but actually, you know, they want to go home. <laughs> most of the time, right? <laughs>
They want to rebuild their countries. And that's, this is super important. So, you know, what you do with World Remit is, is fantastic because it's, 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 it's uh, enlivening, creating brand new economies that wouldn't previously have existed. But they do want to, you know, we forget that actually they want to go home, right? People who have, have left because of natural disaster or war or climate change, they do actually want to rebuild their countries. Do you think that's the number one thing that people aren't addressing when they are talking about migrants and kind of how to help them? No, we no. forget about this all the time. Yeah. You know, you know it, in the media, the media is, is just obsessed with uh, this kind of strange, you know, evil side to, uh, to migration, when actually migration is an opportunity. It's, um, you know, what... what what, what's, the be what's the best entrepreneur on the planet? I'll tell you who the best entrepreneur on the planet is. When you've got nothing, when you've got nothing, you become an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, these people are hungry. They are, you know, raring to go. Um, whole Italian villages that are dying are being revived because of the Syrian refugees that are coming to live there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a beautiful, beautiful story about a Syrian family who went to Norway and, you know, they're completely adopted by uh, all the, uh, you know, the old people living in this dying village in Norway. That's, uh, all the young people left because they wanted to get jobs because it's in the middle of nowhere. And they left and the Syrian refugees family moved in with, ch with children and went like, we're here. And like, I mean, literally, you will cry. It's so gorgeous because they're, they're reviving economies. So um, you've got to think about these things in this more, much more of a positive light. Don't think about refugees and migrants, think about entrepreneurs, think about talent, creativity. Those are the things you should think about. You know, I, I think migration has always been part of life. Uh, you know, the, ever since the Homo sapiens left East Africa some more than 50,000 years ago, we've been on the move. And I think we would have we been all extinct yeah. without migration. And, and so, the, I, I think that, that, that is the reality we need to understand and, and say, so Trump or not Trump, Brexit or not Brexit, I think you know, migration will continue. And, 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 and with that, that, that is what we're seeing every day. Now, what are some of the trends you're seeing when it comes to people sending money back home? Can you talk to me a bit about that? One of the, you know, again, back to my story, uh, you know, before Fiverr and uh, WhatsApp and digital uh, digitization of remittances, it was really very hard to send money back home. And so typically migrants used to send money infrequently, once in a while, when you find somebody going back home. Because especially sending larger amounts through the informal traditional networks used to be very costly. How long would that so, take from point A to point B in terms well, we, of getting that money home? Well, I, you know, even before I left home, uh, some of my family members used to work in the Gulf. And it used to take us like three months to get our money uh, through the informal networks in the past. And the, so so, so that, that's how things were at the time. And, uh, and then the calling cards were very costly. Uh, the, I would have probably, it would have helped me buy a flat in London for the amount of money I spent on international calling cards, uh, uh, British Telecom calls in the, the early days. What has now happened is that if you look at our platform, our regular customers are now doing three and a half transactions a month compared to about three or four transactions uh, a year in the past because now, thanks to the instant communications, uh, migrants are talking to family members all the time, so they're more aware of the situation back home. So in addition to regular transfers now, they can share money with uh, uh, you know, uh, family members back home, you know, a Filipino nurse, uh, you know, maybe in Lisbon now, is talking to her mother more frequently and sometimes uh, skipping a lot uh, to send uh, five dollars because they can use our app, which is easy to use. And then they are, in, in a recent survey, our customers told us that they are, 80 percent of them uh, use the messaging apps when they are sending money or just before they send money. So communication has been a big part of how people uh, uh, remain in contact with the with back. Definitely, so. definitely. And, you know, communication is obviously at the core of what you do at Viber. Um, what kind of makes you guys different from everyone else and why do you think the migrant community is gravitating toward Viber as an app for calling home? 
Yeah, first of all, because it's free. Yeah. And it's as free simple as that. Wins. But I mean, uh, you know, I, 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 I've been invited recently by the Prime Minister in France with a group of other entrepreneurs. And I met there uh, the new Secretary of State of uh, Digital Affairs. You know, we have a very young French president now. He's 39 years old. And uh, then uh, the ministers are teenagers. This guy is 32 <laughs> or something like that. And uh, he's a, he's a second-generation immigrant. He's coming from Morocco. And when I met him, he said, he told me, uh, oh, I like Viber. I use it all the time with my mother. I said, where is your mother? And he told me, oh, in Paris. So why do you use it in Paris? <laughs> well, because when I moved to, uh, to France from Morocco, I couldn't afford to call my mom. And then so I, could, uh, I just could call her once a month. And then Viber appeared, and we started to use Viber on a daily basis. And now she moved, to, she moved to Paris with me, but we're still using Viber to communicate because it's our history. And I, I, my life is full of this kind of uh, story. And I have to say that it's the, the best part of my, of my job these days. I travel a lot, and I meet a lot of people that have this special story with Viber just because we offer them the ability to keep close to their family. And it's true what you said, Mike. They move, but their heart is there, and they want to go back. Yeah. Sometimes even the guys that, like this Minister of Affairs, wants to... Uh, who's going to probably make this career in France. He uh, wants to go back at some point. Yeah. He, he wants to retire there, because that's where he's, he's coming from. I and of course, the refugees want to go back earlier. So yeah. they want to keep close to their family, and we offer them this possibility because it's not only message, it's calling, it's video. So you're very close. You can, you can be very close to your family, and, and, and this is something which, which is the heart of our DNA. The other thing, it's very simple. It's also secure. Mm -hmm. All our communication are encrypted. So for people that are a little bit sensitive about security because maybe they have moved from their country in some specific situation, they're happy to use a tool which is completely secure and encrypted because you never know mm -hmm. these days. So all this is a, the first value that we offer them. And I agree, there are plenty of stuff that we could imagine uh, for new technologies that we can develop for these users, for these people, to help them to uh, develop themselves to the country or help, help their country to be developed and I like this opportunity, Mike, that your, your, your initiative, yeah. because I think it's the right thing to do in, the, in these days. It's, it's a huge, let, let's make material, it's a huge market. Yeah, well, we, I mean, with TechFugees, what we've been doing is we've been uh, building communities, uh, chapters, we have 20,000 chap uh, members around the world now, 24 chapters. Uh, it's, a, it's where uh, engineers, designers, marketers, media people can meet with refugees, co-create solutions. Um, and just the product of meeting refugees and working with them, 70% um, of the people who we've done events with and hackathons with get jobs straight after, within three months of doing a TechFugees hackathon with technology people and refugees, they get jobs, they get internships, they're high-skilled jobs. So the political optics of refugees changes. When you say to a politician, look, a refugee is not going to come into your country and you know, start flipping burgers and, you know, taking bus driver jobs. They're going to actually gonna get high-skilled jobs and it contribute to the economy. That's when the politicians start to take notice. And that's when you can start changing this, this narrative about refugees into entrepreneurs. You don't, you don't, they're not here to make, take a job. They're here to make a job, right? And that's fa fabulous and fantastic. It's something we, as a technology community, can do easily because we always think much, much further ahead than the politicians. Definitely. And if people want to get involved in te tech fugees, how can they do that? Well, we have, um, we have a, uh, you know, we have a fantastic Facebook group, about 6,000, 7,000 people on the Facebook group, tech fugees. Uh, you can sign up to our newsletter. We have a public Slack where people talk about uh, things maybe often in their own, you know, in their own countries. Very, very large public Slack. You can join and discuss things there. Uh, we're also raising money now to build a kind of database of refugee technologies for NGOs and for refugees as well. So we're raising money for that now, right now, and I'd love you to uh, get involved and maybe help us uh, raise that money. And, um, uh, but yeah, just, just engage. And it, 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 there's so much to do. And then finally, I wanted to ask, looking ha ahead to the new year, um, is there any thing you guys are working on in particular. You mentioned your new initiative, but I'm wondering, are there any questions we should also be asking in terms of how we're gonna, you know, continue to contribute positive good to this? Because, you know, the migration uh, patterns are continuing to grow. 
I think there's a lot more we could be doing generally for broader migrant uh, groups because we're really talking about people who have multiple jobs uh, because of their, their experience. I mean, people who, uh, in addition to the hundreds of millions of dollars, I mean, globally, 600 uh, billion dollars of remittances are sent uh, back home every year. Uh, far bigger amounts of uh, money is saved by these migrants, either in the host country or sometimes in the received countries. And technology has a lot to offer in terms of crowdfunding platforms. Many of them want to support uh, uh, kind of enough, uh, Initiatives back home uh, collectively. So, they, they, you know, I think the phenomenal growth of uh, uh, the, you know, crowdfunding is, 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 is welcome. And, and I think there are a lot we could be doing. I mean, we often hear a lot about aid, but uh, international remittances alone, excluding the uh, amount of savings people make, are uh, three times bigger than international aid. Uh, so, there is a lot, and all of those funds are becoming digital for the first time now. So there is a lot that could be done about, uh, you know, how could we leverage that and make it uh, bigger? I mean, I some countries like Israel has benefited from the diaspora in terms of uh, diaspora bonds and so on. But perhaps now technology could enable some of those hardworking migrants to contribute a lot more to back home and help them actually uh, get back to their countries. For us, it's pretty simple. We are, we are a communication platform, but we are going further than messaging and only uh, communication. We welcome all those kind of services to our platform now, which means that uh, this service could be accessible directly from Viber. And we could imagine, for example, to, uh, that uh, you send just like a message money through this service, for example. And that's what we are trying to do. We are opening Viber as a, as a messaging platform plus communication platform for third party services, which allows any service to be accessible through Viber without leaving Viber. And this is exactly the same kind of uh, logic. Anywhere you are, we can, you, can, you can be in touch with your home. Great. Well, that is all the time we have. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. And thank you, thank you to our panel. Thank you, Alisa.